here will be a pretty straightforward proof for the law of sines. And the law of sines helps us solve oblique triangles. So let's say we have an oblique triangle ABC uh, with angles A, B, and C and sides little a, little b, and little c. <coughs> well, the law of sines says that the sine of angle A over A equals the sine of B over B is the sine of C over C. To prove this theorem, we start by dropping a perpendicular from B, from vertex B to side B, like this. And let's call this length H1. Okay. Then we can see that the sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse for the right triangle is H1 over C. And the sine of C, of this angle here, opposite over hypotenuse, H1 over A. So now we have two equations, both involve the length H1. We can solve for H1 on both of these. For the first equation, we find that H1 is C times the sine of A. I multiplied both sides by C. I got H1 is C times the sine of A. For the second equation, I multiply both sides by A, and I get H1 is A times the sine of C. Since H1 clearly equals H1, I can set these two uh, equal to each other. So C times the sine of A is equal to A times the sine of C. And now we divide both sides by the non-zero constant AC. That's the product of little a and little c. It's the product of this length times this length. And here on the left-hand side, the c's cancel. And here on the right-hand side, the a's cancel. So we're halfway there. We now have that the sine of a over a, so we now have the sine of a over a is equal to the sine of c over c. So we're halfway there, we're not quite done. <clears throat> we have to look at a different height of the triangle now. So let's forget about H1 and think about a different height. What happens if we drop a perpendicular, say, from C, from angle C, from vertex C, to side C? So drop a perpendicular here, like this, and call this length here, call that H2. So we go through the same process now. Now we can see that the sine of B is H2 over A. So I have the sine of B is H2 over A. That's opposite over hypotenuse. And the sine of A is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, namely H2 over B. And we go through the same process here. Multiply both sides by little a, and I get h2 is a times the sine of b. And here I get h2 is b times the sine of a. I set these two things equal to each other here. a times the sine of b is equal to b times the sine of a. And then divide both sides by the product of a and b. Here the a's cancel, and here the b's cancel. So I have the sine of B over B equals the sine of A over A. But I already know the sine of A over A is the sine of C over C. Which tells me since the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C and also equal to the sine of B over B, I have uh, concluded the proof. This is sine B over B uh, as well. So the law of sines states that the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C is equal to the sine of B over B.